This is like the fourth time trying to record this damn intro because I just can't get it right today, guys. I can't speak. But welcome back. And I welcome the Valkyries to summon me home! <laughs> How are you, Darklings, Lightlings, Hybrids, and everyone in between? So, uh, been thinking a lot lately, you know, about life and uh, our reality and what we can do with it, you know? And it got me thinking about, like, destiny and fate, and I wondered... How exactly does the Norse uh, believe when it comes to these concepts and also regarding the soul and like uh, what's passed down through families and ancestors. So I wanted to explore that today. If you are joining me again, thank you, you rock, uh, punch that like button. And if you're joining me, punch that sub button, man. We'd love to have you. Ah, blood of my enemies. Alrighty. So, um, if you guys are interested in Norse stuff, I highly suggest Aerith Harger's channel. I will link it. Um, it helped me with my research in this video. But uh, yeah, let's talk about the Norns or fate or destiny. And hopefully I don't butcher the pronunciation in this. If I do, my be daddy. Erdur, the past, Verdandi, the present, and Skald, future, which would be the weaver, the spinner, and the cutter of the threads of fates. Destiny is the choices and deeds done in the past. Fate is what comes to our future due to what past and present creates, which is future consequences or fate. These consequences, by being limited in our choices due to universal law, that is what we cannot change. Because we are given fixed choices universally, the choices we make between what our options are then create our destiny. The outcome or fate is the consequence to the action of the choices we make. It is complex, deep, and fixed by the choices given to us or obstacles that are the universe throws at us or fated circumstances. That would be things that can kind of hinder our paths um, by circumstance that really we didn't bring it upon ourselves. The universe kind of just, you know, put us there and we had to do or choose to the best of our ability out of the choices from the cards we're dealt would be an example of that. We choose how to conquer, how to react, or how to fight these obstacles, which creates fate from those choices or action, reaction. Yes, we have a bit of freedom to choose between choices that we see in front of us, but can we help what is dropped in our face in life and have to choose blindly between what we think the best option is? Either way, your future is set and affected by those actions. In Norse beliefs, there were different and an interesting way of the self or how they viewed the soul. The self and soul were dissected into different parts that each represents a deep and intense view of the self and makes karma put into a very different perspective. One, I don't know if you'd actually call it like a karmic system, but it appears to me it would be like the Norse version of that. Um, which I find a lot more interesting than what uh, I knew prior to that. It really gives a different perspective, and part of our soul is karmically inherited by our parents and ancestors, and their choices and fate affect ours and our soul, according to the Norse. The first part of the self was called Hamir, our looks, 
our outward appearance, like our body. The next part of the self is called Huga, which means consciousness and thoughts. Then we have Fielgaya, a spiritual entity that is bound to our soul. Or we could have many bound to our soul. Then we have Fielgaya, animal helpers and spirits or guides. Next is, next is Migin, our force or essence which can be put into objects or influence others and can be given to the gods as a gift which puts a whole new meaning and perspective into sacrifice and why um, that was so sacred or powerful, right? Because in a way that would be gifting our essence to the gods. And finally, Hemen Giria, our luck but not quite how we would view it to be luck. This part was viewed as like a spectral force similar to Megan. This can be influenced with magic or be inherited by our parents and our ancestors. They believe that our souls were partly inherited through generations and parents passed down through heritage. This was created by their ancestors' actions and choices in their lifetime. This is seemingly close to the concept of karma. However, they had no concept in this of good and bad. So by our parents and by birth, part of us was already made and given to us and will be given to our children. This part of our destiny, along with universal laws, crafting limitations of choices cannot be changed. There's nothing we can do to change these things. We come into life partly destined by what was passed down at a soul level. Most of our circumstances was inherited as well. The key is to choose to react in a way you think is best and think and feel, behaving differently than what our ancestors did, like learning from them, by observing the paths that they took and caused kind of like this generational thing and we can choose to react differently or choose a different way of going about it. Being aware of the paths our ancestors took alters our future as well. Being aware in your present life and what you're doing now, the actions, the emotional reactions and uh, your behavior and the paths you take matter right now for your fate. Others you come into contact with are directly or indirectly altering both of your fates and affecting it. Imagine if the world grasped this concept, they would kind of treat people they come into contact with different or with more awareness. Also affecting your family by your actions, both positive and negative, you can change nothing of the past, making fate a huge factor, but by being aware of your actions and behavior, now can redeem that aspect and help what is passed down to your children. The Norse believed, of course, of the Norns at the bottom of Yggdrasil, but each family has their own Norns as well. The Norse symbol for destiny, the Jord, um, it represents a web of weaved fates, and everyone you come into contact with layers this web as well. I'll give you a little peek see here in my uh, Norse magic grimoire. Um, hold on, let's see. Yes, yes. I use this symbol in a few things I do. But that right there. Yep, that's what we're talking about. Okay. So the Norns weave your life thread and the life thread of others you meet, creating a tapestry that connects us all to the world and the universe. It's interesting because I remember Dolores Cannon um, receiving information about a tapestry in a temple in a certain realm that connects all of us and that we each have our own tapestry. It's fascinating to me that uh, 
the Norse knew this <laughs> in ancient times. The earth cannot be sorry. Okay. The air log or the threads of destiny which makes destiny possible. If possible, you can change it depending on how you behave and the actions you take. That will add layers to the tapestry of fate. Everything is connected by this tapestry, making it possible to use destiny and fate together. I also read that Norse witches uh, would do magic to add their own layers of threads into their fate. And that was how they would get their desired outcome in their reality, which is interesting. I also find it interesting that the, um, they believe, you know, you got your three main Norns, the one we uh, talked about in the beginning, and they reside at the bottom of Yggdrasil, and it's also said that they, uh, they upkeep the well, and they also carve rune staves into Yggdrasil, um, changing the outcome of the world or universe as well. It's all really fascinating to me, and it's kind of how I believe personally. Uh, let me know what you think about this. Do you believe in fate? What about destiny? Don't forget, Destiny Bloodline Sagas, it is out. I don't know if it's still on sale, but there was just a sale. Go check it out on Amazon. You'll like it. And much love, everybody.